Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week three of the PGBL. This week we are up against Ominous Acid. Uh, as I may have said last week, someone who I've known in the community for a long time, haven't spoke to in a while, but it's really nice to see him. Still going uh, about his Pokemon wares, and uh, yeah, you know, while we're friends in the past, today we are rivals. Um, we're facing his team, that Alamello Alamomola, and uh, what's really cool about Acid's draft is he's actually drafted Mono Pink uh, Mon, so that can include their shiny. So as you'll see, um, he has drafted a whole team of Pink Mons, um, and they're all named after their shades of pink, which is actually really cool. Definitely adds a, a nice twist to draft format, which I'm sure you won't have seen from many people before. So what I'll do is I'll go over his squad real quick. Um, he has got the Mega Aerodactyl, Ampharos, Excadrill. Uh, he now has Exploud, but he traded uh, Virizion away the week after our game. Um, so he had Virizion, Heracross, Mew, Miltank, Moltres, Rebombi, Slowbro, and Swamput. Um, you can see the six he bought on his screen. Uh, he did bring Rebombi, Mew, Miltank, Heracross, Swamput, Excadrill. Um, pretty much expecting all of those except the Swampert. Like, I thought in the back of my mind the Swampert could come and I'm not too worried about it because it hasn't got any reliable recovery. If it has rest then fuck me sideways, it has rest. Um, but if it doesn't, you know, there's no way of getting reliable recovery outside of leftovers. Otherwise, looking at his team, it's pretty much what I expected. I see the Rebombi, I know he's going to lead with that to try and get his sticky webs up. I do have Defog on my floor just, um, but you know, looking at his team, I think the main threats are definitely the Excadrill and the Heracross. Now, it actually turns out his Excadrill set is really interesting. I assumed he'd bring Mold Breaker because it then hits my um, Mesprit. Um, but it turns out he's Sand Force with Manual Sandstorm, so we'll see how that goes for him in this game. Um, but what I'll do is I'll quickly go over my team. As always, I'll leave a Poke Paste link in the description below so you can look at the proper EVs, um, IVs, Natures, things like that. But what I'll do is I'll quickly go over my team very basically. So we have got my uh, Lycan Rock, max attack with mostly uh, speed EVs to outspeed something in this draft. Can't quite remember what. Um, we have a Cellar Rock, uh, or a Cell Rock, Drill Run, Stone Edge, and Swords Dance. Um, his team is very weak to ground and rock coverage. All I need to do, looking at the six he's bought, is chip down the uh, the Swampert, maybe the Mill Tank a little bit, but otherwise he really hasn't got anything. Like Drill Run decimates. Uh, Excadrill, um, Stone Edge kills Heracross if he's not Scarfed, um, and the Cellar Rock can kill at like 60% at plus 2, which is nice, so all I need is a bit of chip on that. Um, for Mew, if it's bulky at plus 2 and Mill Tank, I have got the Lycanian Z, so uh, that could destroy one of those, and then we have Ribombi, which is just Ribombi. So yeah, Lycan Rock's like, late to mid game, breaking or cleaning up looks like it could do a real good job. Um, next up we have Greninja. Um, my opponent told me, like I know he slept on Greninja prep wise. Um, Surf, Dark Pulse, Extra Sensitive Water, water Shuriken. Again, the priority is really nice because he does have that Mega Aerodactyl, uh, which he didn't bring. But overall, again, Water Shuriken and that coverage just destroys his team. Next up we've got Special Defensive Florgis uh, with Moonblast, Synthesis, Defog and Giga Drain. Um, just want a grass coverage for that swamp if it did come. Otherwise, Moonblast and Defog is like its main thing and just taking some special hits. Next up, we've got uh, Mega Morwell with Play Rough, Brick Break, Baton Pass, Sucker Punch. I originally had Rock Slide until the very last second when I thought, actually, no, you know what? I need something that can hit the Mill Tank a bit better. And I had enough to deal with a potential Moltres because I was really thinking he might bring defensive Moltres for um, Mega Morwell with. Um, I want to say it gets Flame Body, so that could have been interesting. But Baton Pass is going to be huge for some nice, uh, some nice momentum because obviously I can find out what switch in to this thing is, and the sooner I can get the switch into Mega Morwell gone, the better for Mega Morwell. Um, next up we have Porygon 2. Uh, it's got the Tri Attack, Recover, Foul Play, and Thunderbolt. Foul Play kind of just does like nice chip damage to his whole team. Uh, super effective against the Mew, obviously against the Heracross, against the Excadrill, especially if he gets to plus two. Um, 
so yeah, that like the, this set just kind of does nice. I've got analytic as well this week. I haven't bought analytic yet, but because I'm slow the most things, especially if he brings webs, the extra power boost is going to be nice. And then finally, I've gone for Mesprit with Psychic U-Turn, Ice Beam, and Stealth Rock. Like I said, uh, he had a Verizion. Uh, for this week and Verizion tears through my whole draft so I was absolutely terrified that thing was going to come so I kind of bought a bulky speedy uh, Mesprit for that thing but that's the team that's the six we've bought what we're going to do is we're just going to jump straight into the game here up against Elmus uh, and we're going to see how things go so when it pops up here we go <laughs> acid even in his uh his pink outfit to go with his pink squad um is issuing a challenge and he does lead off with the Rabombi. pretty standard pretty much what you'd expect so i'm gonna lead off with my mega more while because he really honestly hasn't got much for it he can switch an extra drill if he wants but still gonna take like half and you know sucker punch is a thing then so, um, I'm going to Mega Evolve turn 1. We did DC turn 1, um, and I did hit my player off, so I need to go for Sticky Web. So if I miss this player off, he was just going to Sticky Web again. But thankfully, uh, as you'll see, he does go for Sticky Webs, and uh, the, the game restarts without a hitch, uh, because we do not miss the player off. And we bring this thing down to its Sash. Um, I mean, you know, even Max Defensive Rabombi would go down to its Sash. Um, but here, I'm not sure if he's going to switch or if he's going to try and attack me or something. Uh, but he does switch out and I do get the prediction spot on. He does go into the mill tank um, and I get the brick break. And that does a clean 60%. So considering that's unstab, um, they've <laughs> done over half to a fully defensive mill tank, which is gross. Um, well, I'm going to switch out here into my floor just because this is one of my best opportunities to get rid of those sticky webs. And if I can get my own rocks up... Um, or, you know, uh, threaten the Rabombi from not putting up sticky webs again, then uh, I'll be in a really good position this game. So we just go for the Stealth Rock there, which is absolutely fine by me, because I just want to keep clicking that default button um, until I get rid of those hazards and, and sticky webs all day every day. Um, so my opponent does actually switch out into the Swamper here, which is interesting. Um, surprised he didn't go out into his uh, Excadrill, because that would have really put me on the back foot straight away. Um, but I do defog. And um, looking at it, I'm like, well, there's nothing this thing can really do to kill me. So I'm just going to stay in and click Giga Drain. Um, turns out he has Iron Tail. <laughs> and he actually hits. Um, this set is really funky. Um, he did show me it after the game. I've also watched his team builder. And uh, it's like AV with like a bit of speed, a bit of quite a lot of special defense, uh, a little bit of attack, a little bit of defense, a lot of HP. It's all over the place, but it's really cool. Like, he's, he's relaxed nature, but he's put enough speed EVs to outspeed something. I can't remember quite what, but it's nuts. Um, so I can't stay in and take a second um, Iron Tail, obviously. I do want the floor just around, and I'm at a decent amount of health, so it can still do something. Um, my opponent does read me here and actually go for the Scald. So if I just stayed in and clicked Giga Drain again, this Swampert would have pretty much been gone, and then Lycan Rock like, just has a field day, nearly. Um, but he does have to switch out here because I could have the Energy Ball. Um, but I am actually going to set up my own Stealth Rocks, and he does make a good play and go into his own uh, Rebombi. So, um, I'm very much expecting him to go for Sticky Webs here, so I'm happy just to click U-Turn, kill this thing off, and keep my Mesprit as healthy as possible, because it's Levitate, so it's not going to be affected by the Sticky Webs, so it could be quite useful. Um, especially with Heracross there, because if he locks himself into close combat for whatever reason, I have my switch in, I have something that can revenge kill. So um, I do U-turn out, it does obviously kill this Rebombi because it was on one health anyway. Um, and we are now taking an early 6-5 lead. Um, I'm going to get into P2 because I'm expecting, well, anything could come in here. And P2 can just kind of hit something hard. Um, my opponent does go into the Heracross. And I was I was so close to switching out into Mesprit here, I'm really glad I didn't. Because I'm expecting him to go for Mega Horn on the prediction. But he actually plays uh, safe and goes for the knockoff, which is nice. Um, and he got, uh, knocks off my Violite, which isn't huge, to be honest. I'm still quite bulky. Um, I go for the Foul Plate, and that does good damage, real good damage. And what that does does do, if I can speak English, is actually put it in plus two Acceler Rock range. And potentially a really high roll, um, high count Water Shuriken. Um, so I'm going to give the try attack this turn, just to try and get as much damage off as possible. Because um, I kind of figured he was Scarfed at that point. Because uh, it really didn't do that much damage to me. Um, 
He does give the scald here, and as you can see, it still does nothing. He does get the burn. I'm not too upset by that, to be honest. Yes, I don't have leftovers, but it's better than being toxic by something else. Um, and I can just win this 1v1 very easily because I can just recover any damage off he does to me uh, and, and just whittle this thing down. However, as you do know, I do have the uh, sticky web still up. So it's really uh, my priority to get rid of those before I go in with my offensive mons. Um, I did go for the foul play, it really still doesn't do much damage at all. But he is getting weakened, and my opponent does go for the superpower here, and this really does open a door for me to get my floor just in. Um, it does about half, so imagine with an Avi Light, that would have probably done like the square root of nothing, which is nice, um, but I do go for the recover here, I make the play, uh, and get my P2 up quite healthy. So I'm like, okay, um, this Swamp is probably like the best thing that I can potentially defog on. Now he's super powered, so I kind of want P2 to die. Um, so he does go for the Earth Power, and I'm pretty sure after a burn I'm going to die, so I'm going to try attack. Um, however, change of plan, I get the freeze, which is pretty nice, not going to lie. So, what this means is he has to click Scored if he wants to floor out this turn, which means Floor just gets a free switching because that will do literally like 5 HP damage to me. Because he's at minus 1, I entail has a good chance not to kill me. Um, but actually, he doesn't click Scald, he does click the Iron Tail, is what he said in his narration, um, to get the switch in case he fought out. But he doesn't, and this means that I do get a free Defog off. Um, which is huge, because obviously the um, the Rabombi is dead. Um, it does give him a free switch and check to drill, but to have a chance of winning this game, I must Defog these sticky webs away. Um, and I do. And at this point, like, P2 is weak, Flaugis, like, I don't really have any need for Flaugis anymore, I don't feel. Um, so I'm actually going to sack this thing off, and what this does do is it lets me get a free switch into my Greninja. Um, he does still have Swampert around, so I could potentially still recover, although he does have superpower. so in hindsight, sacking P2 off there may have been my best play. But it doesn't matter, because like I said, we do get the free switch into Greninja, and he has literally nothing on his team that can switch into a Surf and then a Water Shuriken or a Dark Pulse. Um, so he has to play the sack game here. He does sack off this Swampert, which is obviously the, the, the good play. I do reveal the Water Shuriken here, and uh, he did then question me. I was like, hang on, is this Ash Greninja, or is this Protean Greninja? It's not. I just like running Water Shuriken. Um, I think it's a move that gets slept on. It's pretty nice recovery. Uh, recovery. Um, priority. So here he does go into the Heracross. I could technically kill with the Water Shuriken, but I'm not going to risk it, because... It's a very limited chance, and this is where I'm going to sack off my PT. This is where having Floor just instead might have been nicer. I mean, he does miss the Mega Horn, um, which has no like relevance to the game whatsoever, other than he loses one more Mega Horn PP. Um, like if I had Floor just, I could have potentially like dodged that and then taken that Mega Horn and got a free synthesis up, and then had a wall. But it's it's irrelevant at this point. Um, the only thing I can go into at this point is my. Um, Mega Maul, because I have nothing else that can take a hit from this thing. Um, he does switch out. He knows he can't kill me with Mega Horn. He just got into his Mill Tank. And I miss the play rough, which is huge for me. I'm actually incredibly happy that I miss it in hindsight. At the time, I was like, more well, get some fucking glasses, because that's two play roughs you've missed out of like five in the season so far. That's not 90% accuracy, that's 60% accuracy. I go for the play rough here, and it doesn't quite kill. I think he lived on 11 HP. So he does reveal Seismic Toxus, and Seismic Toxus we've seen Stealth Rock. I'm assuming he has Milk Drink, which he does. So we don't know what his last move is at this point, but if it's just Seismic Toss, this does give me an opportunity to set up with my Lycan Rock. So I'm going for Brick Break this time, and uh, it actually puts him down to 8 HP, so it's a winning battle for me. However, if I want to use this opportunity to set up with my Lycan Rock, Mill Tank is the only thing that I can really do it on. I take the risk here, I go for the Sucker Punch, but he sets up the Stealth Rocks. So, um, I think that was like a last ditch effort from him to try and get them up, and it, it paid off for him. So that's really good for him. But this turn, I'm like, okay, he's going to Milk Drink. I have to uh, go into my Lycan Rock with Baton Pass. The slow Baton Pass, so I can take damage on this thing and go into Lycan Rock pretty much without taking any damage other than Rocks. As you can see, he goes for the Toxic. This is huge. This is literally the best thing that could have happened for my Lycan Rock here. Um, we've seen his whole moveset now. The only move he has to do damage is Seismic Toss. Um, he knows I'm going to be Lycanium Z, so I go for the Swords Dance here. Um, 
and I'm now at plus two, and I am sitting pretty. Um, I do think that his extra drill at this point in the game um, is Choice Scarf. We've already said it's not, it's Sand Force, Manual Sandstorm uh, with Focus Sash. So, um, we've broken that Sash, which is really nice. I'm going to go for the draw run here because I checked the calc. Celerock doesn't kill at plus two, and I didn't want to miss the Stone Edge. Draw run was the most accurate move I had. We do hit the draw run. That's awesome. The mill tank's gone. He does bring out the Mew here, and he does a really, it's a really smart play by him. He does, um, obviously bring out the Lycanium Z. I'm going to have to edit the cute doggo in over this again because I don't want that copyright strike. Um, however, this is a, uh, this is a, uh, resisted hit. <laughs> this does so much damage to this, uh, to this Excadrill. It's actually nuts. Um, like eventually when it loads in. But now you're just watching a cute dog playing with some stones. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be there every single time. But we are going for the splintered storm shards here. Um, and this Excadrill, uh, I think it's like taken like 5 HP from the Stealth Rock so far. But it's going to take like 60% from the splintered storm shards, which is awesome chip damage because it definitely guarantees me uh, being able to kill it now with, um, with the Water Shuriken from my Greninja if he is scarfed. However, he's not. Um, I had to keep like rocking because I don't have any switches, switch ins, and I actually get the kill with drill run. I get a crit. Honestly, really doesn't matter at all whatsoever. Um, but we do kill that thing, and now in comes the uh, Heracross. What he should have done is he should have gone into the Mew. Um, however, I'm going to go for the Acela Rocket Plus two, and this pretty much guarantees the game. Even if I didn't kill, because I could have gone for Water Shuriken and killed this thing off. Um, but it's now. Uh, Lycan Rock versus Mew. I do still have Greninja with Life Orb Dark Pulse, which is really good in this case. However, I miss the Stone Edge. Um, and that opens the path for my opponent big time. He does reveal Earthquake, though. So um, he, he reveals to be, well, I think he is going to be an offensive me uh, physical Mew. So I'm fearing the Swords Dance, but in my head, I'm like, what priority does he get? He gets Sucker Punch, but that isn't going to kill my Mesprit at neutral. I really doubt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for U-turn to scout some uh, damage out, and he does go for the Sword Stance. So he Sword Stance EQ. Turns out he had Knock Off, and I want to say Zen Headbutt as well. Um, so I do click U-turn, and considering I have no attack investment, I'm timid. That does a lot of damage. Um, but it's good, because I can now just go into Greninja. I know he's not Scarfed, so I can just go into this thing and click the Dark Pulse and uh, take the victory. Um, which purely came down, I, I honestly believe, to the fact the Freeze gave me an opportunity to defog. Without that, then I would have probably lost the game, because I wouldn't have been able to outspeed anything. The, the priority I had would still have been interesting. Um, and, and potentially helped me, but I wouldn't have outsped that extra to kill it off. I wouldn't have outsped, I mean, I wouldn't need to outspeed that Heracross because I have the Acelerock. Uh, I wouldn't have outsped the Mew. I potentially might not have even outsped the, oh no, I would have outsped the Swampert still. Um, but yeah, it was a close game, but the Freeze really did help me out, and it really sucks for, for Acid, but it makes up for week one, if I'm quite honest. Week two and week three is crit and freeze. Um, I honestly think that makes up for the amount of crap that I got in week one. So yeah, um, good game ominous. Um, it was closer than I think the scoreline highlighted. It was a 3-0 victory, so it's a 4-0 and a 3-0. So we're now at like plus four, and I think potentially, I, I don't know what uh, top of the division got. We may be top of the division as it stands. So that's really cool. Um, so thanks for watching this video, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure you check out uh, the links to the PGBL website down below, my Twitter, um, like any other links that I leave there. Oh, the other coaches, that's probably the most important thing. Uh, make sure you check those out. Just as a heads up, next week we're up against uh, In Vivid Color and the South Texas Sable Eyes. And I think his team is like the most fat and grossest draft we've come across uh, yet. So we'll see how we tackle that next week. I'll see you later. Bye.